Good morning, the Lord be with you and also, and also with, with you. you. Welcome to all of you, those who are here and those who are at home watching us. Uh, today is January 3rd and we celebrate in the Christian Church the second Sunday after Christmas. And it is our first live stream service. The year 2020 is finally over and we are in a new year. 2020 will go down in history as the year of COVID-19 and the arrival in record time of a vaccine. Everything seems to indicate that 2021 will be a much better year, or at least the year in which most of the population will be able to protect themselves against COVID-19. This is why we must look to the year 2021 with optimism, optimism. Since social distancing measures prevent us from getting together in mass or getting closer to our loved ones, we can still pick up a phone and call your dear ones and ask them how they are doing and pray with them. For my part and my family, I wish you all a happy new year 2021. That our Lord keeps you and sustain your faith in Him. That He gives you health and strength to face the challenges we will face during this year because there will be challenges and difficulties in our life. But keep in mind the Word of God. God tells us in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 23. Am I a God at hand, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? So let us trust that God is always with us despite our trials and tribulations. We begin our live stream service singing stanzas one and two from the hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessings. Saying, Know the Lord, 
for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. For I will be merciful toward their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Eternal God, we confess that by nature we are sinful people. We have transgressed your law in many ways, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not always been wise in our thinking, and our speaking, and our actions. Our motives and thoughts have not always been pure. We deserve your punishment now and for eternity. O oh God, in your mercy, forgive our sins and restore us to a full and joyful relationship with you through the merits of Jesus our Lord. Direct all that we do by your Holy Spirit, that in the year now beginning, we joyfully follow your will and gladly obey your commandments as you redeem people. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I, in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Be at peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. We continue with the android. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Praise the Lord. For it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant and a song of praise is fitting. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure, but the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear Him, in those who hope in His steadfast love. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory. Glory.
glory of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, you have shined on us the new light of your word made flesh, who lived among us. Cause us to find in Jesus this light, who and what is really important in life, and grant us your blessing as we follow him. Through the same, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for this second Sunday after Christmas is taken for 1 Kings, a few verses from chapter 3. Solomon prays to God for the gift of wisdom. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David my father, although I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to govern this your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and God said to him, Because you have asked this, you have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. Behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you, and none, none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. And if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings, and made a feast for all his servants. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The second reading is taken from Ephesians, a few verses from chapter 1. We are gifted with God's spiritual blessings. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will, for the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the Beloved. 
In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and believed in him were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We continue with the gradual. To us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. And our verse, Alleluia, the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And this is going to be the text for our meditation this morning. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it. But supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Do you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Jerusalem and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Pray, Pray to you, O Christ. Christ. We confess our Christian faith as speaking the Apostle Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing two stanza from him, God of grace and God of glory.
brothers and sisters in Christ, the text for meditation for this morning is from the Gospel of Luke chapter 2, which I read before. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Just when Mary and Joseph thought they found their son, Jesus, after he was missing for three days, it turns out that 12 years old son found them exactly where they should be found, in his father's house. You would think when Mary kept all these things in her heart, she should easily connect the dots of the angelic visit, the shepherd's visit to the manger, the wise men's visit to their home in Bethlehem, and the words of Simeon and Anna at Christ's presentation in the temple to this game of lost and found. Make no mistake, this is not a childish prank that Jesus is playing on his parents. This event has important implications for Mary, Joseph, you, and me. It is not Jesus that plays lost and found with us. It is we, we who sometimes play lost and found with the Lord. For example, we rejoice when a child is born, and when the child is still a baby, we bring him or her to the font to receive holy baptism. But in other occasions, we take our time, and sometimes years, to baptize a child. And when water and the word are applied to the child, it seems as if an allergy to the Christian faith begins. Let me tell you the following. Three pastors were having lunch at a diner. The first one said, you know, since the summer started, I have been having a lot of trouble with bats in the loft and attic at my church. I have tried everything. Noise, spray, cats. Nothing seems to scare them away. The second pastor replied, Me too. I have got hundreds of those things living in my belfry and in the narthex attic. I had the whole place fumigated, but they still will not go away. The third pastor then said, I had that problem a while ago, so I baptized them and made them members of the church. Have not seen one back since. Friends, looks like the best way to keep people away from church is to baptize them, confirm them, and marry them. Friends in Christ, infants and young children cannot drive themselves to church. The parents must make the effort to bring them. But many parents decide to let the children decide how their spiritual life will progress, which is a, is a very bad idea. Joseph and Mary bring the child Jesus with them to Jerusalem for the Passover celebration. They could have left him behind with Mary, for only, for only the head of the household needs to attend the required festival at the temple. Mary and Joseph brought Jesus there because they were a family. The family that prays together stays together. It is a true statement. Yet some families who call themselves Christians only bring their children with them when it is convenient. They bring their children to be baptized, but then they stop bringing them to to church, Sunday school, VBS, in order to learn about God's Word. It is sad to say that some children, like their parents, grow up hearing too 
biblical accounts a year. Christ's birth according to the flesh and Christ's resurrection from the dead. That's it. When the child reaches a certain age, some parents bring him or her for confirmation. And we pastors have a short time to teach them the basic of the Christian faith. We ask the parents to help us teach the faith at home as they grow up. But it seems some children only hear prayers when they come once in a blue moon to a worship service. The Apostle Paul writes, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that, that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Children memorize video games and how computers works and cell phones work without a word of complaint. But when it is time to memorize a few biblical passages of the Bible, both parents and children complain and say it is too much work. Talk about being transformed by the world and refusing to be conformed to the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It is not too late to come to our senses. It is not too late to stop seeking our Lord where He is not and let Him seek us again and bring us to His house. It is not too late to let the Lord conform our hearts and minds to His good and gracious will. So the world will not transform us into mainless consumers of things we cannot take with us to heaven. It is interesting that Jesus' first recorded words in the scripture seem to be words that child his mother. Why were you looking for me? Do you not know that I must be in my father's house? New King James Version says, Why do you seek me? Do you not know that I must be about my father's business? Friends, what is the business of our Heavenly Father? His business is to reconcile the world to himself through his son, Jesus Christ. That is more than likely what our Lord was discussing with the teachers of the law. Matthew says Jesus was both listening to them and answering questions. Jesus does not barge into the temple and declare how he will do his Father's will. He listens to what they say first, then answers their questions. He corrects the teachers politely, for as a child, he is subject to the authorities, he is subject to them, but as God, he is superior to them. The knowledge of Jesus confounds the teachers and perhaps embarrasses his parents. Have you noticed that there are children who embarrass their parents frequently? by correcting people's mistakes and saying things that should not be said publicly. Mary and Joseph do not need to be embarrassed. Their son is working, changing hearts, minds, and lives even as a boy. He's preaching forgiveness and salvation to those who need to hear it most, the teachers and doctors of God's word. Though Jesus was subject to his parents and increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men, he gives a glimpse of what he will do for us when he finds his parents in the temple. Yet, he submitted to Mary and Joseph in obedience to his Father in heaven and in obedience to the commandment and in obedience to his parents 
one of whom was not even his blood father, Christ submitted himself in perfect obedience his whole life long. Who could do that? Not I. I cannot do it. Not you. Not a man or woman in all history could be so pure and so humble. Only Christ. Only Jesus. For this reason he came to fulfill all righteousness. For this reason he came to redeem all of us rebellious and prideful sinners. For this reason he came to rescue us when we were lost. Jesus' parents erroneously supposed that he was lost. Yet the Lord Jesus cannot really be lost. All creations is his home, the work of his hands. Every angel in heaven is eager for the honor of serving the Holy Son of God. This one cannot be lost. Yet for us, he became lost, nevertheless, upon Calvary. For us, he became cast out into thick darkness. For us, he was cut off from his mother, from his heavenly father, and cut off from life itself. We were lost and headed for the same fate, eternal darkness and death, far from the Father's life-given presence. But Jesus Christ took our place for us. He went into the darkness for us so that we will never see it. Dear friends in Christ, Soon Epiphany will begin. And Epiphany is a season of manifestation. Our God in the flesh reveals himself to Jews and Gentiles as a man. The saint of the Old Testament saw God in splendor and awe, especially in First King, when the presence of God in a cloud overshadows the newly built temple. The pillar of cloud and fire, the burning bush, and all the Old Testament manifestations of God are found today in a 12 years old boy who seemingly plays hide and seek with mom and dad. Yet, to come is the greatest manifestation of all. Christ's death upon the cross and his resurrection from the dead. These events are the contents of Christ's teaching to those in the temple. These events are what Moses and Elijah discuss with a transfigured Christ. These events are foreshadowed in the miracles we will hear about over the next few weeks. The throne of God that Isaiah so high and lifted up in the temple he is born according to the flesh to be raised up on the, on the cross as a sin's offering and rise from the dead as the victorious Lord of all. Christ's epiphanies continue in the church today. Though not in a dramatic as fashion as before, Christ comes to us in a humble way. Preaching, baptism, holy supper, and absolution. The means of grace are not attractive as a child teaching adult in the temple, or changing water into wine, or healing someone simply by speaking a word. The means of grace deliver healing and joy to our soul and bring us gladness of heart knowing that Jesus forgives our sins and bring us life everlasting. Jesus is here today in his temple built of bricks on the corner of Southdale and Homeview. He's teaching us through our live stream service. He's speaking his word and we listen. He's forgiven us and preparing us to stand before the heavenly throne of God 
as his blameless people. As verse 5 from Psalm 100 tell us, Give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing two more stanzas from him, 850. salvation be proclaimed here and everywhere, the wisdom of God be honored and followed, and the gift of God be treasured and shared. Lord of the Church, in Amen. mercy hear Amen. our prayer. We pray as this new year begins for our nation and for all of the people of the world, that there be an end of COVID-19 and there be an end to hostilities and the times of peacefulness and wellness everywhere prevail. Lord of all times and all people, in, in mercy, mercy hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for our families and our neighbors. Help us to remember that each person in our lives is a precious gift from God. Guided by the Holy Spirit, help us to choose wisely how we invest our time in the coming weeks and find in our associations with God's people a source of mutual support and blessing. Lord of all generations, in, in mercy, mercy hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all sorts and conditions of people, especially making our petition for the sick and the hospitalized and those who are shut in. We pray for those whose lives are in transition, the unemployed, those who are downcast or grieving, and for all those for whom our intercession is desired. Especially, we pray for Susan, for Sheldon, for Bogus, for Geraldine, for Marianne, for Smyra and Jordan, for Anne and Mike, for Rainer, for Marianne and family, for Ridva, for Marcus and Bristol, for Lisette and her family, for Erin, for Martha, for Bill and Vicky, for Pastor James, for Kathleen, for Stacy and Sons, for Karen, for Nancy, for Mercia, for Maria, for Patricia, for Sandra, for Dennis and Sarah, for Doreen, for Grace, Nancy, Marcia, for Matthew, for Nancy, for Harry, for Mark and Elsie, for Al and Anne, for Shirley and Keith, for Mark, for Frank, for Sarah, 
for Keith and Alice, for Christina, for Stacy and family, for Delbert, for Fred, for Bill and Sandy, for Lloyd and Elsie, for Ed, for Walter and Donna, for Anna, for Becky, for John, and for Irene. As well, we pray for those whom we name in our minds and hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, be with all the families of these congregations. Especially we pray for Jeremy, for Heather, for Tristan and Quinn, for Wayne, Elizabeth, and Katrina, for Melanie, for Matt, for Lindy, for Grace and Benton, that they may be united in the love of Christ, walking together in peace and protected by your holy angels. Lord, in your mercy, hear Here our prayer. prayer. Dear Lord, guard those who celebrate their birthdays this week, especially for Mary Lou, for Vicky, for Joshua, for Franco, for Keaton, for Donna, for Rachel, for Noah, and Sydney. That you, O oh Lord, continue blessing them every day of their life and keep them safe from all harm and danger. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for these congregations, its missions, and its people during 2021, for its leaders, musicians, and other church workers who put their time and talents working in this congregation, that we all have the ability to meet the needs that arise as we do the work God has given us to do as his baptized people, as well for the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the believers in the world who are facing trials, tribulations, and persecution, that they may remain faithful and stand in faith and shaking until death, and thus receive the gift of the crown of life won by the only Son from heaven, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. As a community of the faithful gather, we remember those who have shared the faith with us and now have departed from this earthly life, especially those whose earthly lives came to an end in the past year. Direct our ways that we complete our journey of life in faith with divine wisdom to direct us. At the end of our days, bring us to rejoice together eternally with saints and angels and all the company of heaven in light everlasting. Lord of eternity, in, in mercy, mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
concluded our live stream service for this Sunday. Uh, again, I want to wish you a happy new year, a better year, and always confident that the Lord is with you, is with you and with all of us. Uh, we still are coming here to the church from time to time. If you have anything to, well, anything from us, you could still call us at 519-685-9700 uh, and if we are not there so you could leave a message and we will respond to you as soon as possible so again have a blessed day god bless you